This is Boomer Life on CL 650. And welcome back to the show. I'm Zach Spencer on Boomer Life. We're talking about sleeping better, living better, getting a good night's sleep with the snore dentist, Dr. Sharnel Muir. I have to say, coming up with snore dentist was a marketing stroke of genius because it's so easy to remember. Yeah, you, it's, it's just like... But how did yeah. that happen? Um, we were just brainstorming, you know, you, you sit in a room with a bunch of people, you know, and you throw the spaghetti against the wall and see what sticks. And that was the one everybody just caught on to mm-hmm. yeah snore dentist it's so simple yeah snoredentist.ca and uh so let's explain where you are you're you're in north vancouver but you have a traveling road show right I, like you do get around to different places so explain how it works so if somebody goes to snoredentist.ca and books an appointment that's for your uh north van location that's right so my my practice itself um is home based in north vancouver at marine and bewick and um that website can be used by anyone that wants to see me anywhere, but the appointment booking will only book you into North Van. Mm -hmm. If you would like to be seen on the island, and I know we have a number of listeners on the island, um, you simply call my office and leave your information, or you can email me. So the email is on the website as well, which is info at snoredentist.ca. And just let me know what location that you're looking at. So are you going to other dentistry clinics and working with them, or how we're you, where do you see them? Right. So I see patients in different locations. It will depend on the city. Sometimes I am in a CPAP provider's office. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I'm in a physician's office. Mm-hmm. And only one place in the whole province am I actually in a dental office. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So the rest of the time, it's all just in medical or... Because you don't need medical. to be in a dentist's office. No, right? I don't need anything to do with dentistry. I'm going to... Uh, everything I do can simply be done in a medical office. Uh, here's a strange one. Why do we snore? Uh, if this is, if all of the research is coming back that snoring isn't good for you mm-hmm. and you're maybe not breathing properly, you're not getting good night's sleep, is there a biological reason why we snore? Is it, uh, the one I always think is lying in the Serengeti plain and there's lions around and the reason you snore is to keep the critters away. I that's mean, right. that's what everybody thinks to to scare off the critters the, yeah. yeah well or let them know where you are so they could find you for dinner <laughs> so you know it could be thought of as the opposite where it's not an alarm system for keeping the animals away it will actually tell the animals where you are and mm. you're not quiet and uh, they know you're asleep and they, yeah so you know a lot of snoring and a lot of sleep apnea issues uh, they feel developed as the result of the development of speech okay so when we learned uh evolved into speech we we moved our vocal cords farther down the tube and we left this long floppy t- tube that doesn't have a skeleton around it. And as a result, it can collapse. Now, on top of that, we've had a number of other things that happened. The generalized space in our mouth has shrunk. Hmm. Very few people nowadays get all of their adult teeth. Most people get their wisdom teeth removed. So the jaws are that much smaller now. Because our food is more refined, right? More refined. We're not ripping and tearing at things anymore. That's what they feel. And so with the introduction of the refined diet, therefore our muscles and jaw development has shrunk and our tongue can be crowded as a result of that. And then we get things on top of that like stress, Mm-hmm. and all sorts of other things that are straws on the camel's back. Allergies. Allergies can inflame an airway. Um, and then the, the nasty bits of lifestyle like smoking, mm-hmm. um, that certainly will inflame an airway. Um, alcohol, muscle relaxant can cause problems, all sorts of things like that. Weight gain, another one. Alcohol, I hear, uh, well, I know because <laughs> if we've had a, 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 a dinner party and too much red wine, my wife always says, you, you, you were snoring like crazy. And you yeah. must hear that all the time. Yes. Yeah. yeah. People will often snore worse when they drink. It's, it's, an, it's a muscle relaxant. Right. So it'll tend to cause more relaxation and the tissues will get closer together more often and you'll snore louder. 
And you see snoring in, or you hear snoring in in kids. My, I think my youngest, he snores mm -hmm. because you think, oh, it's just he's just breathing heavily. But yeah, you're kind of just ignoring the fact that he's snoring. Yeah, and often, and it, for children, there's two things that they'll look at. One is, are the tonsils and the adenoids in it, interrupting airflow, mm -hmm. and or do they need braces and and development of the jaws so that the tongue has more room. Yeah. Now, is Vancouver, I, I understand the, the clinic at UBC is, you know, one of two main clinics where the other one is in Boston. What is with Vancouver and sleep, uh, you know, you, you're mentioning at UBC. Yeah. That's where you went to school. You had a professor that taught this. Mm -hmm. So what is, is there Vancouver a, 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 an area of sort of expertise for sleeping? You know, they've done a lot of research here, especially in my field, which is the dental sleep medicine because of Dr. Lowe's early on involvement in it. Um, and and the sleep clinic at the university there has done some very world-renowned research in sleep and treating sleep-disordered breathing. We just happened to be early on. We had some people that were very uh, prominent in the field, and then it just carried on from there. Yeah. So who were, where were the first devices for your mouth developed for some, you know, but, but before people started practicing this? Who was the first yeah. person to say, I got an idea, we'll put something in the mouth and it'll move the jaw forward and help someone sleep. Right. When, were, when, when did this all develop? Yeah, well, Alan Lowe actually at UBC was one of the very first Is that ones. right? Yeah, yeah. He, he developed the Clearway appliance in the late 80s. Um, and it, he had a, he had a, made an arrangement with the university and he gave the royalties back to the university. So every time we purchased a Clearway appliance early on when we treated patients with them, the royalties for that appliance didn't go to Dr. Lowe. They went back to the university to do more research. Mm -hmm. So it was a, a great system that he set up that enabled us to do a lot more research over time. And here we are, 2017, and you're mentioning in and the, the previous show that um, you have over 70 available devices to you. So things yeah. have certainly changed. They and have. you also mentioned that every year they're changing. So if the basic philosophy is the same, you have a retainer type device on the top teeth and a retainer like device on the bottom teeth that's pushing the the lower jaw forward. How how can they change that much from year to year? What's what's where are the advancements? Right. Some one of the advancements is in materials. Okay. So right now we have an appliance called the Narval and the Narval was first developed in Europe. And it was brought to North America by a company by the name of ResMed. And ResMed is one of the largest treaters of sleep disordered breathing in the world. And they make CPAP. That okay. was their thing, is they made CPAP. Well, this is their oral appliance branch of their company. They brought it from Europe. Now, this material is a medical-grade nylon for an easy descriptor. And it's actually related to Kevlar which is in bulletproof vests. It's extremely cars, yeah. durable yeah. material. And lightweight. And it's CAD-CAM milled and very lightweight. So very durable, very lightweight. They can make it very thin. So that's one of the newer appliances. So less intrusive in your mouth then. Yeah. So people feel it less bulky in their mouth. But the custom-made appliances are all less bulky than what you would imagine them to be. Like most people picture those football or those rugby mouth guards, or they've tried a boil and bite appliance from, you know, the drugstore or buying it online. And these ones are much more streamlined, even if they're not made out of the nylon material. Are there any recommendations for the CPAP and an oral device? There's, do some patients need both? I do have some patients that wear both at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, so some people will have both. So say someone came along, they've been wearing a CPAP for 10 or 15 years. Um, oral appliances, they didn't know where to get one at the time. And then they find out about me and they're like, I would really love one for travel or for the cabin or for somewhere that I go that doesn't have regular power or whatever that is. So some people will have either or. Now, some people will wear them at the same time, which would be a classic of that would be someone who should be on CPAP therapy, but the pressure that they have to turn up the CPAP to to blow the air down the airway is 
they can't tolerate it. Right. They can't put up with that kind of air pressure. So what we do is we make them an appliance that holds their airway open, might not fully treat them, but then they can turn the pressure down on their CPAP so that it's tolerable. And mm-hmm. then they'll wear both at once. With the, uh, you know, the exotic materials you mentioned in the one, like a Kevlar-based sort of uh, system, that's your Mercedes-Benz sort of appliance, I'm guessing. So you have a, a, do you have a range of prices? Uh, so can someone come to you and say, I really need to have something, but I can't afford that one. Can you give them similar attributes, but at a lower price? Um, some, some yes and some no to that question. Um, the therapy itself once we get into the durable medical equipment, mm-hmm. uh, whether it's the nylon, whether it's an acrylic base, uh, base with a flexible liner, um, they're all going to be in the same range of fee. And okay. most of those are between $2,500 and $3,000. Mm-hmm. And the vast majority of that is covered by an extended health care benefit plan. So same, about the same cost as a CPAP therapy. We're treating the same condition. Mm-hmm. Um, the difference between this and a CPAP in one way is this is custom made for you and a CPAP is a generic machine that they take off a shelf and then they'll fit any number of maybe five or six masks that will fit your face. But your mask is not custom made. No. This one is custom made to fit you. Do you have many people that have come off the CPAP onto the oral device and are, are, are fine? We do see that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, some of my patients that will come in for an oral appliance for two reasons. One is they wanted it as a travel alternative, but it ends up taking over a lot of their nights because it's just more convenient and easier to tolerate. Or they are not fully tolerant of their CPAP and the oral appliance they can wear throughout the entire night, whereas the CPAP they were only wearing for maybe four hours of the night. Yeah. Yeah. That's the voice of Dr. Sharnel Muir, the Snore Dentist, and the website is snoredentist.ca. Uh, if you sleep better, you live better. It's you pretty do. basic. And uh, when we come back, we'll get a few more emails. We did that in the last show. I thought it was fun. Uh, so we've talked about, um, you know, sleep apnea, uh, CPAP machines, but for a lot of clients, it's just <laughs> they're noisy sleepers. So we'll get some emails and we'll talk more about the Snore Dentist on CL650. Celebrating the Boomer Lifestyle. This is Boomer Life on CL650.